Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Newbie Tuesday hosted by HD Phoenix. This week we are going to look at expansion timings. Now, to showcase that, I'm going to show some high level replays such that everybody can kind of get the idea of what it means to go into a game with a plan. And thankfully, this week we had Liquid Red, you know, from, from of course, Team Liquid, coming to the C server to play against five of our best players, which is um, Kawi, Neo Red Archon, FXO Moonglade, uh, Yun Yong Jun. And the winner of the community open, which is going to be uh, Bosser. So let's let's go into the game. I'm going to show Red Kawis and Bosser's game, such just such that you can really highlight the idea of um, what it means by expansion timings. But uh, I guess before I, I go into that, let's talk more about um, what what I mean by expansion timings. Uh, I see a lot of lower level players. They they just kind of never get an expansion or they, uh, they make this nice early army and they harass and they push but it's like they expect that push to win and if that push fails then normally that, that, that already cost them the game so the idea is, is yes be aggressive yes push harass but behind that get an expansion and we're gonna we're gonna see Red Archon actually do just that so coming into the game cam we, we do have Red Archon here. I'm going to speed it up to two times like I normally do for, for Newbie Tuesday because we don't really, we're not here to analyze their plays. I'm not going to go ooh, ah, over all the Imba micros and strategy and everything. That's not the point of this show. This point, today's, today's episode is about expansion timings. And we are, yes, Red Archon here on Metalopolis at the 12th. And we have Trader. Now, Trader is using, of course, a C account. So this is the, the account that I, I believe FXO. Actually, I have no idea whose account Trader is, but thank you very much, whoever is donating their account to play. And we are going to see Trader. We're going to Trader. We are going to see Liquid Red here open up with a fast expansion, and we're going to to watch Neo Red Archon open up with double racks. So now this is what I'm talking about: having a plan. So Red Archon knows that Red really likes to macro. So his plan in his mind was, okay, I'm going to get two racks. I'm going to try to build a bunker as close as I can here and deny that early hatch. The, the, but the point of that is not to lose units. It's supposed to force, force the Zerg not to make any kinds of drones, force them to make spine crawlers, force them to make Zerglings, and then remember, every, because a Zerg only uses lava, if you are able to f force um, him to make uh, all those attacking units or attacking structures, sorry, defensive structures, then you, you, you're going to get economic lead. So I'm just I'm not going to focus on the production facility. I'm going to focus on the harvesters. So here we are. Uh, Trader is actually uh, Red is actually behind two harvesters. And here comes the first push. Here comes the and you know it, it is it is a little fail. It was a little you know force him to be a little bit defensive. And here we go. Here comes the uh, here comes the real push. Now looking on the production tab. Oh, he is actually making more drones. So he's not falling for it. This one marine actually might get picked off, and he does, you know. But um, look at that. Pause right here. He committed how many? How many zerglings do we have? Twelve zerglings. So red committed to that. Once the once the SCVs at the front saw, wow, that's a lot of zerglings. I've already done my damage. I don't need to shoot this hatchery. I don't need to kill drones because he has made twelve zerglings, which is. Theoretically, it should have been six drones. So let's let's look on, on the harvester count. Yeah, look at that. Even though he fast expanded, he's still two harvesters behind. So this early double racks going pure minerals, not even getting any gas, was effective. That is his plan. You know, it is so important that when you go into this these maps, that you have an expansion plan. And look at that. So we are going to see, we are going to see Red Archon come here, doing a very 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 good defense there with his um. Actually, you know, Red being uh, very, very careful and looking on the units lost. Yeah, we lost one SCV and one Marine for eight Zerglings, and that was that was effective. Here comes the second push. Now, remember, the idea is you want to expand, and uh, the best defense is sometimes offense. So look at that. He is forcing Red to remake his Zerglings. He's making four more. He's making ten more. Now, now that Overlord saw, saw these Marines, and right now he can just back off. He can choose to back off. Or he can choose to go for some drones. He's going to go for some drones over here. He's killing a lot of drones and he's actually focusing the drones down. And look at that. Finally, Red just pulls, pulls his drones away. Looking at the harvester count. Once again, he is still three harvesters behind. And I mean, the, the Zerglings are going to clean this up. Looking at the production tab, he is not making any more Zerglings. Oh, never mind. Scratch that thought. He, because he's really made that. And yeah, 
So, maybe a little bit greedy there by, by Raid Archon, but the, the purpose was served. So I'm going to pause over here again so, so, so I can collect my thoughts. You make this push. You force him to make a lot of Zerglings. Now, when earlier, just now, when the Zerglings came up here, there was a little bit of a miss... Uh, well, not a miss uh, macro. I would just say it's a decision point. You know, he decided to go for the Marines. He went up here. He only managed to kill one, one other Marine, but he lost eight Zerglings. So Red Archon's like, okay... He only has four Zerglings because he started with 12, he lost eight, he has four. I will push. I will push to this point. This Overlord saw the Marines and it forced Red to make another 12 or so Zerglings. Once again, not, you know, putting the pressure on, force him to make drones, and all this time he is expanding. So his point is not to win the game with this push. The point is, is to box. Well, not box the, the Zerg in, but basically force options. Like, look at that. The Zerg has no gas because he's been fo he's only basically on one gas. He's, you know, he has to defend against this, so he cannot afford to get gas. So that means we are now at the eight-minute mark. One gas, you can barely support muters. You can barely support banelings. Um, no, you, you can just just nice support banelings. You can just nice support roaches off one gas. But right now, up, up to this point, Red Archon has played brilliantly and really, he's still 3 Harvesters ahead looking at that, 31 over 28, and he is controlling the game. Except for, so he made 3 pushes out. The third push, maybe it wasn't so um, useful because he did lose a lot of Marines over here as we saw. But it is this idea of, I go 2 racks with the idea to expand. And then while I expand, my defense is offense. And then I get bunkers... In case my offense fails, I can run back to my to my. So I mean, these are the things that you want to to focus on, which I'm highlighting in this game. Come into the game with a plan. And uh, yeah, we are going to get more more little play here. Let's pull out the production tab. So yes, Red is going to respond by this heavy marine pressure by getting Banelings. Very very nice choice. And we are going to see very very quickly here. Red is going to transit. He see this is the thing. He has. He feels safe now that he has Banelings and he has spread his creep such that the marine pressure will stop. The moment... So Red also has a, uh, has a plan in mind. His, in his mind is he wants to go 2 base muter. But he couldn't because of the early pressure. The moment the pressure relented, we are going to see him get the 3 gas. He's going to get a 4th in just a moment. And once again, he is expanding so he gets access to 6 gas. Because his muters were late, he needs the 6 gas uh, to catch up. So... It's, it's, it's the idea in both of the, the, their heads. Right now, it's... I, I go early Marines to put up pressure. On Red's, on Red's camp, he's like, I defend with, with Zerglings until I, get, I can get safety, either in the form of Spying Crawlers or Banelings or Roaches. It doesn't matter. I feel safe. Then I go for four gas, and then I throw down my Spire. Actually, where is that Spire? There we go. The, the Spire's over there, tucked away. And look at this creep spread. So... Looking at Red Archon, he has saved all his gas and he's thrown his gas into tanks. So now this is a good timing for a push. So he's scanning to deny the creep. And he really needs... Ooh. Yeah. So let's pause. Let's pause right there. Why did Red get a third expansion, get six gas, and go for Munas? Because he felt safe. You know, in his mind, expansion timings. Okay, this whole new Tuesday is going to be about expansion timings. I got an early expansion. He's going to pressure me hard. So I am forced to only make Zerglings, only make Speedlings to hold it off. Okay, he pushed once. You know, I defended it. I pushed the second time. I defended it, but it wasn't an overwhelming win. The third time Red Archon pushed into him, Red was able to kill off a lot of the Marines and still keep his Zergling force. Then he's like, okay, I feel safe because I'm making a Banelings Nest. And I have a lot of links left over, so he doesn't have that big of an army. Let's um, let's get three or four more gas. And uh, <laughs> let me set myself to busy. Uh, do, 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 do. Now I know how HD feels. You are now in my class. And yes, I am a guy. I can only do one thing at a time. So if I'm typing, I can't talk. If I'm talking, I can't type. Which um, I really admire those people who stream and talk at the same time. I have no idea how they do it. It's their talent. But um, where was I? Right. Um, the idea of having a plan. So Red's plan was to go for mutas. 
he couldn't until he got something as a safety net, which was Banelings. And then, sure enough, Red Archon pushed with a lot of with a, with a lot of uh, with a lot of Marines. He had the Banelings in place. He already had uh, centrifugal hooks, and boom! Every single you can see all the, all the all the, all the assets still sprayed on the floor, and then you're just gonna see these tanks being being very very easily cleaned up by these by these Zeglings. Now, um, let me see if what else that have I written down here that um, it's going to go into play. So, I, I I can't really get much more out of this game uh, for you guys. What I really plan. Uh, ooh. Okay. Um, you know, I mean that's not that's pretty even battle. I'm able to train about six or seven banelings for a single tank and some marines, so it's a good trade. But uh, I think I'm going I'm going to stop the recording here, and I'm going to queue up the next game because I mean the rest of the game we are going to see Red Archon eventually lose because Red was Red Archon stayed on Marine Tank and then Red just basically put a lot of creep highway and then the moments the Marine Tank force touched the creep uh, Bailings, Bailings just destroyed them and um, yeah so it goes on for 25 minutes but eventually, there's this huge flock of muters. Red had five, six bases to Red Archon's uh, three or four. And then once Red Archon lost the gold, then he, he called GG. But let's go into another game, which was also by a very good player, Kawi. Very famous Protoss from C. And he does something also very different. So once again, let's go back into the, uh, let's go back into the in game cam. And we do have our Protoss hero here. As Kawi has speeded up to two times, he is on, this is on Jungle Basin. Interesting. I know all the Zergs out there are like, oh my god, this map is terrible for Zerg. Well, you're gonna you're gonna see Liquid Red beat uh, Kawi on this map. So, and the 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 thing is, is I it's not I don't care who wins on, on this cast. But the idea is, what is their thought process? How can you learn from this? If you want entertainment, watch Gom TV, watch GSL. You know, if you're watching Newbie Tuesday, you want to improve. And what are the little nuggets that you can uh, get out of it? So you're gonna see this game. Actually, Kawi is going to go for Gateway Cybernetics Core Phoenix. Huh, interesting. And Red, of course, is you know he's Red. He's going to fast expand. So Kawi knows that he's a he's a macro player. He just saw Red Archon lose to to uh, Red, and he's like, okay, I sent out a scout. I see the fast expand. I have a couple choices. I can four gate, three gate expand. I can go sentries. But uh, no, he decides to play it a little different, and he goes for Phoenix. Why would he go for Phoenix? The idea is, is Phoenix serve two purposes. Well, first, of course, you can pick up any stray overlord, so it denies any kind of sight across the field. So it makes Red play blind, because he can't exactly float an overlord there. He would have to send Zerglings. And of course, Zerglings, if you have a choke here in the front, they're not going to be able to see inside your base. So you'd be able to hide quite a lot of tech. It's also good if you are wanting to make some kind of like immortal push or you're teching to DTs, you know? And the second thing is is scouting. Because the Phoenix flies so quickly, he basically was able to see everything in red space, see exactly what was, was he going, was he going for a mass speed link, was he going for a roach push. And then what, with that information, then it would, ironically, the Protoss would be able to play like a Zerg, reactionary. So we are going to see Kawi going to set up here. He knows that he's not going to. He's going to throw all his gas into Phoenix, into the Stargate first, of course, and then into the Phoenix. So yeah, there's the first Phoenix. We do have. We even have uh, Protoss Air Weapons One. So I mean, Kawi's really going for this. He's supplement because he's spending all his gas on Phoenixes. He has a lot of minerals, and he's on defense. He's not going to be offensive with his army. Okay, let's spend my minerals on on uh, on cannons. And look at that, this he's gonna push out here with his phoenixes at the same time expand. So we are gonna we're gonna follow these phoenixes a little bit and just see how much damage they do. Pulling up the units lost, Kau, Kaui right now has only lost a single pro. And right now he has picked off one overlord, a couple drones, he's able wanting to pick up as many drones as he can before the spore collar is done. Able to pick off a second overlord, picks up the hydra. So Man, uh, this this kill count is going up really, really high. The things are gonna duck out of here, and just uh, just do a lot of uh, pressure. Now, let's let's pause here.
what is the response to Phoenix? Red is thinking, okay, you need you need a star you need, you need a stargate. You need he clicks on the Phoenix. They have weapons one. That costs gas. He has four Phoenixes this early. That costs a lot of gas. Unless he's going to make a push with only zealots. I'm gonna I'm gonna be pretty safe because, uh, you know, why not throw down another hatchery? Why not? You know, so and why don't I just drone up? Because yes, the phoenixes can pick up my drones, but they own they can, they own, they need energy to do it. So if they're if they're picking up drones, they're gonna run out of energy. I get a spore collar. In, I get a, let's go back into the in-game cam. I get a spore collar in each in each uh, base. I get hydras. And then I just build my Hydra army. And then I get an expansion. Look at that. Look at the harvest count. 49 over 34. Even though he's being harassed, Red's like, I know this play. I know he cannot have an army. Let's expand. So, again, talking about expansion timings, Kawi wanted the, the scouting information. He wanted to put on the harass. He wanted Red to basically make a lot of units to kill his phoenixes. Then he can expand safely. Red, on the other hand, is like, mm, I want two base, maybe I go Mutas. Oh, there's Phoenixes. Okay, never mind, I won't go Mutas. I'll go Hydra and Fester, which is also a very, very popular build for, for Zergs. And the Hydras and Festers would do very well against Phoenixes. If, if Kawi is a little bit careless and lets his Phoenixes stay inside the base, one single fungal growth on them will let the Hydras clean up all of that, then he will be very safe to push. So you see, you see the, the, the idea, the, the thinking in both of their minds is, it's I want to play a macro game, so in my mind, I'm expanding. You know, everything I do is with the idea to expand and then get that nice big army. Red is like I expand, I, I immediately expand, fast expand. And Kawi is more like, let me be sure I'm safe with these with these phoenixes and put out harass, then I expand. So coming back into the game, we are gonna see these phoenixes be complete douchebags. Now they are five. They are joined. I one more, they're picking up more and more drones, and yeah, I mean, look at that, even able to pick up the queen, and being super effective, they're picking up these two straight hydras, and fine, no, he doesn't even lose, looking at the unit's loss, 15 kills, <laughs> 16, 17, 18, and finally, finally the sport caller is able to chase it away, but remember, looking at the production count, what is he making? Hydras. But right, look, looking on the game clock, it's 10 minutes, 30 seconds. Harvester-wise, 56 harvesters. Remember, he lost 19 units to these phoenixes. And he's still he's still uh, 7 harvesters ahead. And now he's building his army. Look at that, the Hydra Roach army. He is um, he's actually getting uh, pantological glands. So, yeah, there we go. Once the gl glands is almost done, he's going to be making infestors. And then, and then he's going to make this nice big push. So right now... The Protoss army is making that nice little death ball of Colossus Void Rays. We are eventually going to see Kawi make a push out with this army, but he doesn't have enough gateway units to support. So a single fungal growth on the Colossus allowed the Hydras to basically focus it down very, very, very quickly. And also because he's been spending all his gas on, on air units, on Colossus, on Void Rays, on Phoenixes, uh, he didn't have the gas for sentries. And yeah, I believe the Phoenixes just died. Uh, all, uh, I think they all died. Yes, because remember I was talking about how fungal growth is is eventually going to catch those phoenixes, and once they're caught, the hydras will take care of them. But um, yeah, I'm so we are gonna. I'm just gonna show you the one battle that he he, he pushed out here. He has three void rays, quite a lot of costs. He's trying to secure his third. Immediately, here comes the fungal growth. They cannot move. Uh, you know, Kawi does focus down the the infestors very very well. The, uh, the infestors actually the third one is is barely alive. The, the Void Rays are focusing down all the Hydras, they do manage because there are a lot, a lot of Void Rays. But the thing is, is you're going to be able to recreate Hydras a lot faster than you're going to be able to recreate Colossus. And from here on, uh, Red just constantly pushed, kept denying the third, the third expansion by, by Kawi and eventually Kawi had to tap out. But um, yeah, so that game was actually very, very creative play. I'm just going to just go over here. And, and load up the next replay, but um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I can't emphasize more that if you are in the lower leagues, if you are in bronze, silver, gold, platinum, low diamond like myself, you need to expand with a plan. 
Did I just rhyme? Uh, yeah, you need to expand with a plan. Um, no, actually, that's not rhyme. And, um... So, in every... That's, that's why it, it's not so much... Like, I know last week we talked about the fundamentals of scouting, of macro, of, of upgrades. But even if you had all that, and you had no plan, you know... And most plans are, unfortunately, all in plans. They're like, let's go f four gate. Let's go, you know, two base baneling bus. Let's uh, for Terran would be, I make I make two barracks. You know, I pop out a couple morales and marines, and I early push. But very rarely I see people expand. So, when you are going to make these push, the idea of this push is to cripple, not to kill, and just cut a few units and get your expansion while you push. So we are going to see, I'm going to highlight this guy because this guy is quite impressive. And, you know, like I saw some of his games, I, I very much liked it. This is going to be none other than TGC Bosser, which is the winner of the Community Open. So he got a chance to fight Liquid Red. Now, I, I need to say that nobody was able to take a game off Liquid Red. I did hear a, 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 you know, a couple of reasons why, and they are valid. But, I mean, it is a show match, so it's just for fun. So, don't, I mean, don't take it so seriously. But, um, what did I write about this? Right. So, basically, what Bosser did in this game was he went 4-gate. Now, 4-gate is really, really effective against Zergs, especially macro Zergs, like, uh, like uh, Red. But, again, Red's idea in mind is, I'm going to fast expand. The, the way I can very quickly lose this game is if I get... A timing attack or I get sneaked attack so the point I'm gonna I'm just going to keep up the harvester count this entire game and we're going to look at Red's drone count because in his mind I want to fast expand but I don't want to die so I'm going to play as if it's one base except I threw down the extra hatchery but in terms of army size he's playing as if it's one base until he feels safe and then when he feels safe then he's just then you're just going to see the harvester count just jump straight forward so looking at that, he is going to actually get get his gas uh, a little bit faster. So this is not a super fast expansion; it's an expansion on 21 drones. So, but it's it's just to be a little bit safe. And looking at that, Bosser is already tw four harvesters ahead because of uh, Liquid Red going for this early, uh, earlier push. And there we go. Here comes the four gate. Very 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 soon, we're going to see this overlord come over here and poke in, and then he's going to see the four gate. And looking at the harvest account, he's still okay. There we go. He's up three harvesters now. He just made five more. And yep, yeah, did the overlord see that? Looking at the over, yeah, yeah, he saw the four gate, and he knows it's coming. So let's look in the production tab. Yep, yeah, immediately twelve zerglings. Looking on the harvest account, he's still three harvesters ahead, but he hasn't made a single drone more. So we're gonna keep we're gonna keep the idea here on the harvest account. So he made one drone into um, into a spine collar. He cannot lose his spine collar. So here we go, he's, he's buying time to, to let his spine collar come up and he is only, only making defense until he feels safe. So this, this, this queen is punching him in the face. Now this is when Bosser made a good decision and decided to pull out. Um, I, be I believe he wanted to pull out. And is he? Yes, he does. Okay. Pause. Why do I say that's a good decision? You put out a lot, a lot of early pressure. Looking at the harvester count, 22 harvesters. He did not make a single uh, other drone. The frowny face was the frowny face that I would have is let's look on let's look on the bosser cam. On the bosser cam, he does have minerals. He stopped all pro production, all pro production. If he made that four gate push and he constantly made probes, no, okay, now he has queued up two probes. But if he was constantly making probes, he would be three, four, five uh, drones ahead. Workers ahead of, of that, and you force you force uh, Red to make a lot of Zerglings, 17 Zerglings here. Red is going for a little bit of a counter attack just to draw his attention away, because the army is, 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 is away. But um, Red is doing this thinking he needs to equalize the amount of, of uh, probes. Oh, look at this, he's, he's, he's dropping expansion. I love it, it is a little bit late, but um, all the minerals that, that could have been for this expansion could have been making drones here at the first, ex first nexus. So it's just it's it's the idea is 
in Rhett's mind, is I'm going fast expand. I might I might die from a four gate, so I'm going to play as if it's one base. I'm going to get a lot of lanes out to defend, and then when I feel safe, then I'm going to drone up. And we're going, we are going to see the Zerglings come in here. They are going to pick off one. The Zealot does chase him around, and look at that uh, on the production tab. Oops, that's the pause button. On the production tab, 16 more Zerglings in production. So the thing is, is Red is really, 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 really concerned about another four gate timing push. So he has, he's basically playing one base. You know, with you know, this hatchery for all it's worth could have been inside inside the base. It could have been a macro hatch. And look at that, he is testing the front. The point of this is, let's 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 go back just a little bit, just before that attack. It's think about it in terms of Rhett's idea, in Rhett's mind. I fast expanded. I want to drone up. I, I check. He's getting his nexus. I need to feel safe. I can't get banelings because they are not good against Protoss. I can't get roaches because they're too slow. Uh, it wouldn't give me the map control I wanted. And also, roaches need kind of need to be in big numbers to be effective. But speedlings, the threat of speedlings alone will force my opponent to make more army instead of making more probes or nexuses or anything. It forces the opponent to be defensive. And when the opponent is defensive, I feel safe to drone up. And look at that. When, when this push is, make, is coming along, Rhett's making seven, uh, seven drums. So, looking on the har uh, looking at the harvester count, Rhett is now 30 harvesters over 24, 22. Looking on the um, production tab, he's making more overlords. Look, look at the very threat of, of the speedlings. You know, he's, he's forced to do that. And actually, this is actually really, really smart. Uh, we did talk about it uh, with Revenant. Revenant does the same thing. Is Rhett sees how many sentries he has. He's taking small groups of Zerglings, trying to squeeze them by key spots to force force fields. To force the Protoss to get force fields. If he didn't force field here, these Zerglings would have came here and killed four or five probes. That's, you know, he, um, because of that, a couple, a couple of Zerglings did die. But to waste the energy on the sentry, that's worthwhile. It's not the point of the, of the newbie Tuesday today. But, I mean, any advantage that you can get, if it is cost effective, why not? You know, it would have been bad if he took his entire zerglings and then half of them got caught here, and then yeah, that would just that would just be bad. But uh, but um, you know, Red's just taking small groups and enforcing that. So look at that once again, making another eight harvesters on the on the harvester count. He is scooting very very far ahead, thirty eight over twenty five. Why? Because he feels safe. He has a plan in mind. You know, as soon as I I, I get I. So many people, they get this fast expansion and they think I must macro because I am playing, you know, 14 hatch, 15 pull, 15 hatch, 14 pull, or whatever, whatever it is. I play macro, so I get lots of drones. Um, yeah, you, you know, but you're, you're expanding without a plan. You're expanding with like, what happens if you get attacked? What happens if you get cheese? What happens if you get sneak attack? Um, what then? So, yeah, you know, if you want to expand, like Ray Arkham we saw in the first game, we got, you know, you got a, two racks and then fast expand. Use your marines to get control so you feel safe. If you're red in this game, get a lot of zerglings to get map control. Look, at, he, has a, he, has a, he has a zergling parked over here. And this probe is going to probably go down. Oh, actually, wow. He actually was able to, 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 <laughs> to see everything. So actually, a pretty good play there by Bosser. I, I do like this guy. And, um... I mean, he feels super safe. Look at that. 64 harvesters over 43. And why? It's because he feels safe because he has his army. And we are going to just watch one push. And then uh, I'll, I'll, wrap, I'll wrap up this newbie Tuesday. So, yeah. Lots and lots of force fields. But the Zerg, very wisely, is fighting in a place. You, he had to put so many force fields. Just, just, just to do that. So the Zerg, you see, the, if the Protoss was able to get to this choke, that battle would have been very, very much different. And now Red is just going to abuse his economy. He's just looking at the production tab. He is just churning out nothing but roaches. He's making a transit into Hydras because once you have a lot of roaches, Hydras at the back do a lot of damage. And he's just going to abuse his uh, roach advantage. So these roaches are going to clean up. 
And I notice one thing about Red's play is he's not a big fan of upgrades. Um, I, I'm going to fault him on that because upgrades are really cheap. Uh, an Evo Chamber is nothing. You know, it's it's the cost of a, of a roach. So you, you cut one roach. The cost of a missile upgrade is just 100-100. So, you know, I mean, one attack, two attack early would make a big difference. Of course, if you're being attacked like you were in the beginning when you're defending your, your second hatch, of course, don't get an Evo Chamber. Of course, don't spend it on... On that, but once you feel safe, drop that Evo Chamber, get those upgrades. So, um, yeah. So, I'm just going to wrap up that Newbie Tuesday. So, we just just looking at my sheet. In the first game, we saw Red, uh, not Red, <laughs> we saw Red fighting Red Archon. So, Red Archon went a very, very interesting uh, two racks, and he was actually able to do a lot, a lot of early pressure. And because of the early pressure, he was able to force Red not to make drones while he got his own expansion. And actually, it was a pretty close game. I would fault Red Archon that he didn't make a transit out of Marine Tank, so it allowed Red to continue to stay on um, on, on uh, Mutaling. If he had made a transit into Mech, for example, a lot of Hellions with Thors, with, with tanks, uh, it, would force, um, it would force Red to go more Roach. And then he wouldn't have the upgrades... Uh, four roaches like he did for his mutas and his phalanx. In the second game for Kawi, also very very interesting. He went one gate, one cyber, one forge, and then he got one gateway and he was harassing nonstop with phoenixes. Um, unfortunately, Red didn't fall for it. He's like, okay, I'm not going to build my hydras early. I'm just going to build a single spore crawler at each base and drone hard. Drone, 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 drone. Because I know that you're spending all your gas on these phoenixes. You're not going to have an army. So Red played that perfectly. I'm sure he has seen that strategy before. But it doesn't take away the brilliance of Kawi's play. In the sense that he was able to do a lot of harass. I believe those phoenixes racked up 25 kills in drones, overlords, hydras, and, and, and queens. Before they finally got caught, uh, taken down. And it gave Kawi all the scouting information that he needed. He didn't need to build observer. He didn't need to sacrifice probes or drones, so, and it gave him it gave him map control. So you know, even though Kawi lost that game, I'm not going to take away that that build. That build was very very good. And in the last game in in in, in Bosser, also the same. That four gate push was good, but I think Bosser was going with the intention to kill. Where I'm saying that you should go with the intention to harass and cripple, so you can win in the mid game. You know, going all in or to the tilt and putting basically all your eggs in one basket if that push fails you lose is very 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 um, risky you're basically rolling the dice seeing what kind of positions you can get if you can get a good surround you win if you don't get a good surround you lose and that's a silly way to play Starcraft 2 because then you're not consistent and what separates amateurs from professionals is not their skill it's their consistency why is Moonglade going to Korea? Because he consistently wins uh, tournaments. It's not that he wins one tournament and then you never see him again. So, trade, you know, tr you know, for this newbie Tuesday, think about expansion timings. Think about I harass. Not it's not all in. I harass. I cripple him, such that my expansion can kick in and I get the macro advantage, so I can win in the mid game or I can win in the late game. Alright, so with that, thank you very much for tuning in. That's going to be Newbie Tuesday for this week. Tune in next Monday for PK StarCraft uh, with me and Kelly, Phoenix Kelly StarCraft. And we are going to probably pull in a Terran. So I haven't decided which Terran yet. If you could leave me a message. Uh, the three Terrans that I'm thinking of pulling in is of course Red Archon. Very, very excellent Terran. Yun Yong Jun is also proven to be fantastic. He was very, very high on the sea ladders. And another one, of course, is our very own Singaporean of Oxygen. You know, he's also a very, very aggressive player. So the whole point of PK StarCraft is to bring people in and show their replays. And it's to see what they think. When they make particular plays, when we make particular strategies, what are they thinking so we can learn from what they think. Because it's very different from watching a replay and then you guess what they're thinking. You know, then if you were to watch, watch it with the pro there, and then he tells you why he does it. You may actually gleam a lot of stuff. And also next Tuesday, we, we do have another Newbie Tuesday. And we will probably be focusing more on a Bronze, Silver, Gold. Unless I have uh, really excellent matches to showcase for you. So do sign up for Bronze, Silver, Gold on StarCraft2, SC2C.com. And yeah, looking forward to casting your games. This is HD Phoenix, signing out.